So, Modo, you wrote, if I'm not mistaken, back in 2017, the most worrying aspect of the Trump administration is its protectionist stance. Is that still the case? Do you still feel that way? And what about his criticism of uh, the car companies in Japan invading the United States and the threat to impose tariffs yeah. on the car mm -hmm. companies and that sort now, of thing? Before we just answer to your question, we have to distinguish two things. One thing is the just result of the Mr. Trump's action, we are just observing what we are now here. But at the same time, there must be the reason why Mr. Trump was elected as president. Mm -hmm. So we have to think about why he was elected and he is doing this kind of business. And that is very much related to what I talked, the trilemma among three things. One is globalization and national sovereignty and democracy. Now, when we have a more globalization, probably we were in what we call the hyper-globalization in the last 20 years. And there's a lot of pressure for democracy to change. And that is what often people call the populism. Mm. Okay. So actually, Japan was very much used to very severe trade negotiation with the United States for many years. So mm. we know how we should just respond you, to that. You've thing. adapted to Trump? You've, you've adopted No, no, policy. just the United States uh, in general. <laughs> but my point is, so Mr. Trump may be populism stage one. And there must be maybe populism in stage two. As long as just globalization is continuing, there's always a pressure for democracy to be eroded by populism. So we have already just heard the name of the Elizabeth Warren. I don't know whether she's going to be the next president or not. And, but the important thing is whether Mr. Trump is continuing or maybe we have a, some other maybe very leftist, maybe Democrat or whatever. And then we still have to just uh, prepare for uh, the we have to work on the, uh, the uh, populism. And another thing uh, I want to emphasize is the, uh, when you are facing that kind of a protectionism, the negotiation is often not just uh, uh, go ahead, rather than defending your previous position. Now, when Mr. Trump uh, became president, uh, Japan and other Asian Pacific countries were already almost finishing the negotiation of TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. Then, unfortunately, Mr. Trump just decided or mentioned the United States is getting out of the TPP. So the, our purpose is very obvious. One is how we can survive the TPP. And second, how can we, we deal with the United States? And it's a, it, that is exactly the reason why Japan had a, a bilateral negotiation with the United States. And, uh, in order to just uh, have you, a... Well, you would prefer to have a bilateral conversation than no, a multilateral when, conversation in the framework of the TPP? When it is necessary, uh, bilateral conversation is necessary to survive. Mm -hmm. I mean, like a TPP, for us to just finish even without the United States, we need some kind of implicit agreement of the United States for us to continue the negotiation. Mm -hmm. And uh, the TPP result is actually giving us some kind of discriminatory treatment against the United States because other TPP mem members enjoy declining tariff on Beef. But that may be a very good weapon for us uh, to just uh, have a deal with the United States that uh, uh, giving us a very similar type of tariff reduction may just have an incentive for the United States not to raise a tariff on the car. So mm -hmm. it is not just uh, forward looking, it's more defending. Right. But that is a very important part of the, the right negotiation when you're facing protectionism. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it has to be a bilateral, I mean, you're, you're working bilaterally rather than through any kind of an international yeah. organization. So it's a, a little bit different and difficult for other countries to uh, to do to have the same kind of bilateral relationship. Yes, but, sure. uh, yeah.